Hi, hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got another writing vlog. The focus of this vlog is going to be a new plotting slash outlining method that I have been starting to use and that I have actually really enjoyed and that I've kind of been practicing a little bit um, with a couple other projects. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you are not already and if you enjoy these kind of chill vlogs about um, the writing process of a newbie, <laughs> of an aspiring author. And of course, if you want to support me further, you can check out my Patreon down below. We are two patrons away from hitting my first uh, kind of goal on Patreon. And when I hit that goal, I'm going to make a video specifically about developing ideas um, and also talking about the all of the ideas that I've developed so far and ones that I've even like worked on in the past and ones that I have coming up. So I think that'll be a really cool kind of Patreon exclusive video. So if you want to be part of that and if you want to support me, you can check out my Patreon link down below. Now to the writing vlog. Um, Monday is testing me. I feel like this whole week is really testing me. First, the having to like redo all of Between the Waves. Obviously, I'm thankful that I figured it out as early as I did, but it was still kind of stressful realizing and kind of uh, digesting that fact. <laughs> and now today, my internet has stopped working, which is not good because I still work. So I was supposed to teach two classes this morning and I was literally starting the one. Like we were about to jump into it. And then my internet was like, no, I think I'm done for today. So the morning was off to a rocky start. I'm still gonna have to go to a cafe at some point to get some Wi-Fi because I do have meetings today. We also have a doctor's appointment today because my body has just decided that it hates me lately. <laughs> Um, so that's super fun. <laughs> Life's really just coming at me hard right now, but that's okay because we're alive. We're healthy, I think. I'm still fairly healthy. I could be less healthy, you know? Uh, but I mean, we'll see it at the doctors if I'm actually not healthy. <laughs> so since I have no internet anyways, I'm going to do some writing because I can do that without internet. <laughs> it's one of the few things that I can get done without internet. changed into something much comfier that makes me feel like a teddy bear. So we have finished chapter one of the Blood of Amberum edits. I will say, since I don't really know how to edit, I'm not really sure if this is accurate, but it feels like I am being very nitpicky when I'm editing. So I'm hoping that that means that I'm not going to have to do as many drafts. Like I think that I'm handling a lot of stuff in this draft. So we got that done for today. And the first chapter was kind of getting me into the swing of things, into the swing of how doing these edits is going to go, which I will say, is a lot easier than the actual drafting. The drafting is more fun, but more difficult so far, but the editing is easier, but not quite as fun because you don't get to make stuff up anymore. You kind of have to problem solve, which I'm okay with. And I wanted to mention, okay, so this is Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. You've probably heard of it. Um, I very recently became obsessed. It was basically on my to buy list uh, just because I had seen it around and I am such a sucker for dystopian uh, as well as kind of fantasy elements, so magic, which is literally exactly what this is. Um, the first novel that I ever like fully outlined and really fully fledged out and started to write was a dystopian novel. And I think that I will write that in the future. Um, because I freaking love dystopian. Ugh, 
I love it so much. So I recently became obsessed because I came across a video of hers that was on Instagram. And in that video, she mentioned that she went to school for screenwriting. And I saw that video and I was like, oh cool. Like she went to film school, that's cool. I obviously have a minor connection to film school because I went to film school. So I thought I would do a little bit of social media stalking, which I did. And that is how I came across a video where she explained her entire breakdown of how she outlines a novel. As you all know, I have been practicing plotting. I have been trying many different methods. I've been looking into it, researching it, trying to learn how everything works. This method is, I have now applied to both of my books, even though I didn't use it initially. And I have also used it to plan a third book don't ask me about it right now. I need to not start a new project when I only have one done and one halfway done, but I did, I did outline it. So next year, give me a couple months. But I wanted to give this method a shot and it was, it, so far, this is the method that I have found that works the best for me. It makes so much sense to me. She uses popular movies and some of my favorite movies that I absolutely adore as like examples for setting up story structure. And it's something that I at least have some inkling of experience in because of film school and because of kind of going through at least a tiny fraction of that process. So I wanted to not necessarily uh, explain it right now on my channel because she literally has so many incredible resources on her own social media channels. Um, but I did want to bring attention to it. And I wanted to say that I have gone through and used uh, the method that she mentioned, which is the three act, eight sequence uh, structure. Usually it's for, it's kind of for setting up movies, but I have gone through and done that entire thing with her Red Queen book, her debut novel, because she explained it all on her Instagram. She literally went through the entire novel. She explained where act one started, where act two started, where act three started. She explained how each of the sequences was separated. And she explained that she basically outlines by deciding on the inciting incident, the midpoint, and then the lowest point, and then kind of doing a little bit of filling in, uh, depending on which act you're in and how you're separating those sequences. And then from there, she builds out a little bit more of a, a more fleshed out outline and then she builds the book. And I'm learning, obviously, I'm a newbie. So I was like, I am going to try that because movie structure at least is something that I'm semi familiar with. And by semi familiar, I just, because obviously I'm familiar with story structure, I've been reading my entire life, but I've at least gone to school, even if it was just one year, for film um, and taken a screenwriting class and, and sort of, um, you know, like I've, I've spent a year, an entire year of my life and many, many hours of class time picking apart movies and, and understanding the structure of them and what like makes a good story in that medium. So I, that's what kind of made me want to use the method that she talks about so much. And I am sold. The stories that I've written so far make more sense when I fit them into that structure. And this is part of what made me realize that Between the Waves needed a complete refresher of the plot because I wasn't quite following this correctly and I wasn't following it in a way that was going to do justice to the story that I knew existed in my head. So moral of the story, the, I basically went through and I reverse engineered this entire book in order to understand the structure. Obviously I followed her outline and what she explained because she put the entire video on her Instagram. I know that it's not gonna work for everyone, but I wanted to share it because it, it isn't a method that I have come across in the rest of the uh, like novel community, novel writing community. It is only something that I've come across in film and then Victoria Aveyard as a way that was kind of like bridging those two mediums. That's why I just wanted to share it because so far it is the plotting method that has made the most sense to me. It has made me understand my stories and the structure of them and where I'm missing things and where I need to add things and how to adjust my stories in order to make them work exactly how I saw in my head. So it's all very exciting and I know she's never going to see this but but I want to express how grateful I am to Victoria Aveyard for posting that video and for talking about it and just I don't know thank the universe for allowing me to stumble upon it because really like taking that video reading Red Queen and using it to break down Red Queen and then trying to apply that same structure in the way that she explained it to my own stories made so many things click into place that I am now forever indebted to Victoria Aveyard. So yeah, I am going to link the exact video that she used to explain the story structure down below so that you can find that um, because it really 
helps me so much. Um, and if you want to look it up, it is just called the three act eight sequence story structure. And you'll probably find it more so if you're looking for it uh, in reference to film or screenwriting, just because I think that's where it came from. So yeah, okay. We are going to start editing um, chapter two. I think I might have a glass of wine and I might try to relax tonight because it's been a it's been a wildly stressful day and I kind of just want to do some self-care and make sure that I am relaxing before facing another busy day tomorrow. You don't see what you have in front of you. Well, maybe I'm not enough for you. So maybe I should go. If I had known from the start. I think something that I want to try and fix is the pacing. I think it could be a little bit quicker, especially at the beginning. Um, I think that the beginning was where I was excited to be all descriptive. And now that I'm actually reading through the beginning, I, I think that that is one of the places where it wasn't as necessary. Um, you know, like I have, I have the inciting incident, I have the world being built up a little bit and little tidbits here and there explaining how the world works. However, I, I think that there's too much I don't know what to call it, low level description. Like I describe how the wind smells and the feeling of like walking along the road and just like minor little things that really, really aren't necessary. And I think it's because I had just started writing at this point and I was very excited to start describing those things that I just went a little overboard. Um, I think it's fine because in later chapters I get less descriptive because I'm uh, in later chapters I start to go a little quicker so I don't I no longer felt as though I had the time to explain everything which is good however it is something that needs to be cleaned up in the first few chapters so that's interesting and we're learning so so far just to explain um, what I'm basic what I'm doing I have the original manuscript backed up in about three different places just in case so then I have two different files open one of which is the original manuscript the second is the new draft so I've just called it draft two and I will start by copying the first chapter and moving it over and then I highlight it in red and as I go I will change the text back to black um, once I've made my edits then I'm like this feels fine um, so to kind of track where my where I've gone with my edits um, so that's what I'm doing so far and then when I finish a chapter I move the next chapter over or that's the plan we're only on chapter two so I'm gonna take a bath because it has been brought to my attention lately that I have a problem with managing stress. Um, <laughs> it's basically to the point where it is now affecting both my mental health as well as my physical health, which is a stressful thing in and of itself, but it's more of just a wake up call, I guess, that I need to take better care of myself. I'm gonna chill, I'm gonna take a bath, I'm gonna sit in there and I'm gonna read the second book of the Red Queen series. It's gonna be incredible and I'm going to allow myself to actually relax, which is something that I, I do not do often at all. Maybe once a month, then that's pretty much it, so. But we got a lot done and I just wanna take care of myself so that I can continue to be productive and continue to tell these stories in the way that I know they deserve to be told. And that's what's most important at the end of the day. And part of that is taking care of myself. So that is what we're gonna do. And that is the note that we're gonna end the vlog off on because I think that's important. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you did enjoy my content. And always you can support me on Patreon if that is something that you have the means to do right now and you feel like doing it. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching the video. Don't forget to smile and I will see you in the next one. Bye.